Okay, I'm gonna answer a question like I'm that. I'm just here so I won't get fined. I'll be in the middle. I'm just here so I won't get fined. It's my summer. Can I have a bowl of Skittles, please? <laughs> They'll fill in. They filled in last time really late. Yeah. I'll miss it. How many letters are in your name? Do you have my regular camera on my desk? No. No, nine. Yes, you do. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. Oh. I'm just here, so I don't know. I was thinking without the heart. Because I used to, no, I was thinking about the dark. I used to only go hard. Oh, sorry. Give them two or three more minutes before we start. All right. Coach will begin with an opening statement from yourself. You guys ready? <laughs> Representing Texas, head coach Jared Elliott, Yazi Bedart Hani, Kat Brooks, Molly McCage, and Amy Neal. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Well, we're obviously honored to be here and represent the Big 12. Um, we know it's going to be a special uh, Final Four with uh, here in Omaha because the crowd is so wonderful and. You know, we've got a lot of respect for what Minnesota and Hugh can do, and um, we're, just all, we're just so happy to represent the University of Texas. Before we open the floor, as a reminder, please introduce yourself and the institution that you represent. We'll open the floor to questions to both student athletes and Coach Elliott. Coach Mike Malloy from NCAA.com. Uh, uh, Minnesota, when you look at the, the swings, is a team that's somewhat similar to yours. They have one hitter that gets um, a lot of swings. Uh, how, what is that like to go up against a team where there's one hitter is kind of the focal point? Well, you know, he's done a, a, such a terrific job of creating a system where it's still hard to be able to trap her because of the speed of, of the game that they play at. I mean, it's the fastest go set that. Um, arguably in the NCA, so <laughs> that we've seen at least. Um, 
and they've got a great setter, so they're on, on point. You know, I think it's the other players are the ones that can really hurt you as well. So it's not just one player is able to to take over. Um, we've got a lot of concerns with a lot of the different players, but yeah, she's going to take a majority of the swings, and obviously, you'd like to do a good job of trying to manage those swings and contain her to a certain level. Michelle Vogel from ESPNW. You've been here before, if my memory serves, and when uh, Final Four was here in Omaha. What does it mean to have this be an advanced sellout for the sport? And I, I know there's going to be a lot of red, but um, uh, you know, it's still a, a pretty good, I, I would say, um, uh, showcase for volleyball. Yeah, I think it's uh, absolutely. You know, we're, we're excited that we're here, obviously. We're excited to play in front of the Nebraska fans. Uh, they're you know, I think they're fair. They're they're good people, and they appreciate good volleyball. So, um, I think it's it's going to be an entertaining four teams that are playing. But I think it's also kind of a direction of where the sport is heading. I mean, there's continued fan growth. Um, our goal is to be able to get that kind of across the country, and we're starting to see it in our home state in terms of what's going on there and, and across many universities. The, the sport is developing to a much higher level. Um, the games are a lot more exciting. And uh, it's a quality sport. Eric? Yeah, uh, Jared, kind of along the same lines, uh, have you taken note of just the fact that all these are Midwestern teams, that there's no West Coast team here this year? Yeah, somebody uh, mentioned that to me yesterday. That it's the first time that uh, it's four teams from the central time zone. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can tell you that when I got to Texas in 2000, um, the state wasn't very hot. And now it's arguably one of the best states. And you know, California was the hottest state. And that's now you look at the Midwest in terms of how many great players are coming out of there. And it just it's you know, you look at the numbers of, of high school participants uh, in all the different sports, and you see what's happening in the sport of volleyball. Uh, you know, we're getting better athletes that are coming over from different sports, and uh, it's a, I think they're enjoying it. And it's it doesn't surprise me anymore. I think anyone can win from anywhere in part of the country now. Tony. Uh, Tony Boone from the Omaha World Herald. Uh, this is for the seniors. Um, I wondered if you could just touch on the accomplishment of making it this far through every year throughout your career and the chance to end this thing the way you started it. Yeah, it's crazy to think that this is our fourth Final Four and that we're the only class at Texas to ever been to have been to four Final Fours. And I think it's just a testament to, you know, how many great players that we've played with in our four years here and just also the job that Jared's done recruiting in the past to build this program up to be able to do that. And it's just, it's incredible. I mean, it's really crazy to think about and we're just really happy to be here again. Amy, do you have anything to add? Um, I mean, like she said, Jared's done an amazing job here. I think uh, Eric, Tanya, Deanne, our trainer, Donnie, our strength coach, Nathan, I mean, like Susie, our media lady um she's they just all do everything and they contribute so much to everything here so i think that they have a part of our success as well and just all the hard work that they put into helping this program succeed molly um yeah i just think it's just a matter of how hard we worked over the years and what kat said there are so many great players that we've played with and every single team is different but i i love that each year we're we're willing to work with the pieces that we have so we can be successful Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Coach, uh, I know you can't just pick whoever you want, and that's how recruiting goes, but I'm wondering how familiar you were with Kelsey Payne before she came to Kansas, and, and if you could just discuss what you think, how she's done so far and, and made an impact, obviously. Yeah, I think uh, we were very, I mean, we were well aware of her. You know, she came on a couple of visits with her, and we looked at her. She's in our backyard, and so. You know, sometimes this recruiting goes at such an early age, you, you're learning a lot about where they are emotionally as, as young ladies. And um, we knew she had the talent to be extremely good. You know, that was all of a position. And, you know, at the end of the day, we, I made a miss. And it's not the first one that I've made a miss on. But she's a great player playing for a great coach and a great program. And it's, it's great to see her succeed. And, you know, there's, I don't regret any, any part of it. I, I think she's happy and, you know, I wish her the best of luck. Ryan Atulo, Austin, American Statesman. Molly, the only players in the field right now who have Final Four experience are from Texas. Can you just talk about leaning on the past three years, uh, those experiences to, to, to get ready for tomorrow? And then 
Yazzie, if, if you could answer then, what are the veteran teammates on your team telling you about this experience <laughs> and what you should expect? Um, yeah, we've been here before, so we know exactly, you know, what we're going to do today and tomorrow and how to prepare. Um, that being said, like, our team is very different, so the way I prepare tomorrow is way different than last year. So um, just getting our team ready is a different process. But, um, yeah, it's really nice to have an advantage and just to be comfortable here because we've played in a big crowd. We've played in front of Nebraska fans several times. Um, so I'm excited that our team will be comfortable. Yazzie? Um, they've really helped us all with just being comfortable in the tournament. I know step by step, um, they've just told us one point at a time, one game at a time, look at each opponent um, by themselves and just don't look ahead. And throughout the whole tournament, they've just been great with keeping us all, like telling us all how to do like the tournament and get through it. And um, so like now that we're here, they've just been keep confidence and everything like that. Uh, Chris Lazarino with Kansas Alumni Magazine. Coach, with apologies for another Kansas question. I know your mind's on Minnesota 100%, but um, could you offer some perspective? You, you guys have obviously seen Kansas. Offer some, some perspective about uh, their victory over USC. And um, does that speak to a, a growing level of parity in the sport or the Kansas program itself? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously we know the, the program well. Um, you know, I'm very tight with, with Ray. Um, we got to see them twice this year. You know, I don't think they played very well when they were down in Austin. Uh, I thought we played exceptionally well. And then I thought it was a very, very competitive match when we played there. They could have gone either way. You know, we just executed late in game five, which was uh, good from our part. But, uh, you know, they, they caused a lot of problems based on all the movement they have. They run a lot of different play sets. Um, you know, Kelsey has the ability to go over anybody and be able to create some different angles. Um, but what isn't talked about is how good their setter is. I think she does a phenomenal job of just running around. She's really fast and get her hands on the ball and puts up quality balls. And their defense is a lot better than people give them credit for. So the combination of being able to counterattack with their defense and their setting can become overwhelming at times. And they've got the player per personnel to be able to, you know, hurt you from the left, hurt you in the middle, and hurt you on the right um, based on kind of what rotations are in and the, and the personnel that they've put together for this team. Uh, two years ago, uh, when, when uh, you beat Nebraska to get to the Final Four, uh, I remember you made a comment during that press conference that there's a, you know, people chide Texas by saying, well, it's just a bunch of good athletes, and all we have to do is, you know, open the door and let them go into practice. Does the fact that you guys have made, you, you brought that up, and is the fact that they've, uh, you guys have made the Final Four five years in a row, does that dispel that uh, that myth about there that it's just a bunch of athletes and not great volleyball players? <laughs> well, I would love to put those people that say that in my shoes in terms of how much management goes on to be a coach. You know, yeah, obviously there's some advantages when you have great talent, but there's also some more challenges because you got a lot of type A personalities and you got to be able to blend this kind of talented players and in, in, in the system that you develop has to be good uh, from year in and year out. So you've got to have a good staff. There's a lot of things that go on that I think make this more reality and it's, it speaks volumes of what our seniors have done in terms of the culture that we've created you know right now my hands are kind of off them they're just kind of they're cruising and they're playing and we've got a lot of trust in their leadership um, but yeah it's look no one expected this I don't think this team to get here with you know some of the er injuries that we had early on and, and the unity of this team is tighter than it's ever been and and when you have that you know great things can happen and it's the reason that we are sitting in front of you guys today so um, if that's what the criticism is of me or my program, I will take that all day long. Uh, Greg Eklund, this is for KUT in Austin. This is for Amy. Uh, being an Austin native, this is a different stage altogether, but if you could reflect for a moment on the path uh, through Austin that it took to get here, can you, can you share that? Um, yeah, it's been incredible playing in front of my family at every single game. I actually have 15 family, family members coming to Omaha today, so I just think the fact that I've been able to be with them at every single game is like, it's incredible, and I wouldn't have wanted it any different way. And just the fans in Austin, besides my family, are crazy. I mean, you saw Gregory Jim on Saturday in the Florida game. But just playing in that environment 
and those fans are just so much fun and they get us going. So I just think being in Austin in that environment is huge for our success. You know, the, the talent you were just talking about, five of them, all Americans today, can you just comment on that accomplishment? Is that official now? I can speak to it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know, the, there's only one ball to go around, and when you have five All-Americans, um, it's pretty special. And it's, uh, again, I think there's so many pieces that go into to, to those players deserving that, but I, it, it's not only the players that earned it, but it's the players that are around them. And, you know, I think this is the most that we've ever had. Uh, as a program, so it it, it kind of shows cases what we have as a team this year that we're more of a. When I say team, it's not saying that we weren't teams before. It just when I, we're utilizing more personnel on a consistent basis instead of overloading certain players. So, um, yeah, to me, it's you know we we make a quick announcement of it. It's it's very. Um, so it makes you proud. It makes you, you know, realize what these players have sacrificed to get to that point. But more importantly, I think. And I think these girls will speak on it. They, their goals is not to be all Americans. Their goals is to win a national championship. I think those are the things that they work for every day, and that's what their goal is. Clint Robis from the Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, this is for the athletes. Um, Minnesota and Nebraska are both in the middle of finals week. I was just curious where you guys are in the semester, if you have finals this week, or if you've had a crazy final story at this point in this week with traveling and all that stuff. I didn't know that. Um, I actually finished two weeks ago, so I've been cruising. Yeah, same I'm with. Done. I'm done. Too. We're we calm finished major about a week ago. <laughs> it was pretty bad the first, first round, first and second rounds. Yeah, was that it? week was. That was a really bad week for us, but I think we've all been done for like a couple days. I think the days. last final was uh, yesterday, and it was only one person. So we've Worked all been cruising. Nicely. Yeah. We try to organize it so they're done before this point. That's part of the preparation that we go through. Yeah, I know, I know, Amy, this is for you. Coach is talking about individual honors aren't a big deal, but you did have, you and I talked about, you had a, a rough freshman year, and mm -hmm. now here you're a senior and first-team All-American. What does it mean to you to have made the, the journey that you've made? Um, I think the biggest thing I reflect on is just the hard work that I put in with my teammates to get there and just how this team is so much fun to be a part of, and I couldn't have done any of this without my teammates. And just my coaches, my strength coach, everyone has contributed to it. And just the confidence that they've given me and how much they've taught me about and like life lessons that will go on outside of volleyball, just about myself and what it takes to succeed at this level is probably the biggest thing. And just looking back, the sacrifices, the hard work is the biggest thing that I've noticed that pays off. Are there any further questions? Seeing none, I'd like to thank Coach Elliott and the student athletes for joining us. Our next interview will be at 215 Kansas. Thank you. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to have to bundle my name.
Representing Kansas in our final press conference of the day, head coach Ray Bichard, <coughs> Anise Havili, <coughs> Kelsey Payne, and Taylor Susi. Coach, we'd ask you to begin with an opening statement. Yeah, we're just uh, extremely excited to be here uh, representing uh, our university, our athletic department. These young ladies have worked extremely hard. Obviously, the last couple weeks have been uh, a lot of fun for us. Uh, we feel like we've got more work to do, and we're excited about representing uh, not only our conference, our university, and um, our athletic department. So uh, rock chalk, everybody. It's great to be here. As I open the floor to, to questions for both the student athletes and the coaches, a reminder, please silence your cell phones and introduce yourself as well as the institution you represent. I'm Jack Hammond with Volleyball Magazine. Anise, now that you've had a few extra days to go over those last few minutes uh, against USC, um, you know, you've had a chance to calm down since the last press conference. What happened? How, how in the world did you guys do those last six points? Um, I still, it's still super crazy. I've watched that play. I've watched the last, last six points like a thousand times. Um, we all just looked at each other and relaxed and we all said we'll take this one point at a time and we'll win each point and see how far we can go and then we won. Kelsey or Taylor, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I agree. We, I think that that whole fifth set, you know, we started down 0 and 4, and we kind of freaked out a little bit. We're like, man, this isn't going the way we want it to. What's happening? It's not working. Like, what's going on? And then we took a timeout, and we're like, you know what? What we have is enough. We have all the pieces that we need right here. We just have to trust in each other and know that we're all going to do our jobs. And so I think that's what happened. Everyone just did one thing better, and then it all worked out. And that's not like the first time we've done that. I mean, that's been our mantra all season is one point at a time, and uh, we're going to do it together. Coach uh, Mike Malloy, NCAA.com. Um, uh, Coach Cooker mentioned that you guys are friends uh, earlier uh, today and that you've got some connections uh, with Nebraska and Coach Pettit. I was hoping you could uh, elaborate on those relationships. Yeah, Coach Pettit, uh, as I look at somebody that's it's been as influential as anybody in the development of my career, it'd be uh, Terry Pettit. Um, when I was at Barton County Community College, he was the head coach here, and he went out of his way uh, anytime I would pester him with questions. And then I started working his camps and his team camps and had a pretty long conversation with him last night. And that transitioned into uh, me getting the job at Kansas, and he still being at Nebraska, and he still felt like uh, he was in a position to, to help volleyball grow at all levels. And you know, and Coach Cook's been the same way. Uh, it's a little different relationship, but we've I've expect I've respected what he's done a great deal from afar. And um, you know, he's an old Big 12 school, and we had great matches, and um, they had a great venue we enjoyed playing in, and he's done an outstanding job. Matt Tate from the Journal World in Lawrence, Kansas. Coach and and Kelsey and Anisi both. Uh, Two first-team All-Americans for the first time in school history. I wonder what that means to you guys as, as athletes and then also, Coach, just the program to have that uh, significant accomplishment now in your, in your, I guess, record books. Kelsey, if you'd begin for us. Yeah, um, it's awesome. It's a really big accomplishment, and I think it's something that all athletes strive for, and it's something that we all work towards. And so to be the first ones ever to do it together, it's, it's really cool for us. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a dream come true. Every athlete coming up sees a first or sees all American team coming through club and hopes one day that they can be on that list. And now that we are, and I'm on the list with my best friend out here for the first time, and it's great. What do you say? The um, um, these two, when, when we let them know earlier in the week, uh, they talked about how much value they put in that award, but almost. almost also, how much value they put in it being a lot of having to do with uh, being here. And uh, certainly a team that advances deep in the tournament, it's going to create opportunities for individual awards. And um, Nisei's been outstanding. Payne's been outstanding. And this whole team has uh, collectively pulled together and created a season that uh, we'll remember for a long time. Nisei, do you have anything to add? No. no. 
I want to go back one more time to that USC win uh, because it was such a dramatic ending, but it, it did look as if um, defense got a tremendous amount of, of the credit there because you had, um, you know, you had Samantha Bricio, first team All-American, just powering away on there, and you don't have any defensive players up here, at least traditional defensive players. Can you talk about your defense, Coach, um, and, and what you had planned for that fifth set against USC and how you were able to execute that? Well, late in that match, uh, we had Susie and Payne in front of Bricio, um, and Rigdon was our left side, so we said, hey, you got to get in front of the middle. Uh, they were in a two-hitter situation. They'd gone out of their 6-2 system, so we felt like we were organized there. But Cassie Waite made the dig of the match um, in, that, in that last rally. And um, we also had a, a stuffed block from Payne and Susie, and we also had some good releases. So we were pretty organized defensively. Um, they didn't get a ton of real quality swings, but they won the ones they did. Um, Susie and Payne were organized blocking-wise. Rigdon did her job. And it's what it gets back to as a staff, Coach Bird, Coach Todd, Coach Lucas will always talk about, hey, do your job. Do your job, and, and if everybody individually is accountable to that, then we'll have a good result. But you know, the ace serve by weight was a big part of that run too. That got us to deuce game at 13 all, and then you could sense then that the Jayhawks were going to do something pretty special. For any of the players, I'm just curious how it's going to be playing in front of this crowd because this is going to be a pro Nebraska crowd, and and if you. Uh, you know, kind of embrace that challenge. Taylor? Um, like we've talked about all season, um, we just play our game. It's our side of the net. Um, <laughs> it's, what we, it's what we do. We do our jobs like Coach Beach sa or B said. Um, we just have to focus on what we do every day, rely on our training, tune out everything else that's around us. Didn't every school get 200 tickets? <laughs> every, so it's equitable, right? <laughs> OK, I thought so. Eric? <laughs> Ray, uh, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, not that it probably means much now, but uh, I'm sure it'll be talked about on the telecast tomorrow that you guys are 0-86-1 uh, against Nebraska all time. I just kind of what's your quick take on that? I wish I'd have been part of that one. Uh, when, what year was that? Um, these guys have never played Nebraska. Um, also, obviously, they know that they uh, are an outstanding program. I think that speaks to two things that Obviously, Kansas hasn't been competitive enough over the years in that situation, and Nebraska's been an elite volleyball program for a long time. So um, uh, we'll speak to more recent history, hopefully, uh, tomorrow night that we can uh, create uh, maybe a different situation. Coach, I, I just wanted do you have any idea about that tie? I know it was 1977, <laughs> but do you know anything about it? Yeah, I was, a, I was a freshman at Barton County Community College, so playing hoops. I'm not sure what was going on in 77. I think they used to do multiple matches in a day and maybe you played two sets and if you split them you called it good and you moved on to the next match would be my guess. So that's kind of unique. Uh, Kelsey, uh, uh, we'll go back to a bad memory. Obviously last year you lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Can you compare the, 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 the pain of that defeat with, uh, with this run, particularly beating USC? Yeah, I think we talked about that a lot at the beginning of our season is that we don't want that to define us. That was unfortunate for us, but I mean, we used that as motivation this year for sure. We knew what that felt like, and I think the returning players realized that we don't want to feel that ever again. And so far, I think we've done a good job of avoiding that. Kelsey, hi. Ryan Atula with the Austin American Statesman. Jared Elliott was just in here, spoke very highly of you and said, Look, I missed in recruiting. Uh, do, you, do you use that as a slight at all? Did you did you want to be a Longhorn and he just didn't pull the trigger? <laughs> um, not. I mean, I'm not gonna say no because I grew up in Austin and Texas was always a big part of my life. But I mean, once I started getting into more recruiting and looking into colleges, I realized that I did want to leave Austin. I did want to leave Texas and just like get away and go experience college, like kind of like a regular student, I guess. So yeah, I think leaving was was a good choice for me, and that's. That's awesome that he said that, though. And then as a follow-up, um, Texas is really admiring what you guys have done. And I think Amy said maybe, Amy Neal said maybe she reached out to you afterwards. And uh, I think Jarrett said he reached out to you. Do, do you feel like this is a 
Big 12 versus Big 10 Final Four now, you know, <coughs> Texas and Kansas versus I guess Big so. Ten schools. I guess so, yeah. They're, all the girls are really great. They all texted us and like tweeted at us and told us congratulations and like how excited they were for us. And so it's awesome that they can be here too and we can experience this all together. Kevin Haskin, Piggy Capital Journal. Ray, you mentioned the 200 allotment. I'm wondering how resourceful will your fans have to be? And is it disappointing too because you'd you cultivated such a following this season and now you're two hours up the road and, and it's difficult to get in this place. Yeah, we'll have to have uh, resourceful fans and they'll find a way. Uh, obviously, we're going to be a little outnumbered tomorrow night, but uh, the fans that really want to get in the building and see us will be there uh, and we're excited about that. And it, it's important for this event, for it to be a lot of energy in the building, for it to be sold out. So nobody does it better than Omaha. I've been here a few years ago when Nebraska and Penn State were getting after it. And it was, there was, it was unlike any environment I've ever seen. And so it's, it's outstanding for our sport. Uh, it'll be a great spectator event tomorrow night. And hopefully Jayhawk fans are resourceful and find their way in here. Coach, uh, Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald. How important is it going to be for your team to get off to a, a strong start the way you did against USC? Well, I think that'd be great. Um, I think uh, our first contact will be uh, essential. Uh, how we pass, how we serve, that kind of settles everybody down and creates offensive and defensive opportunities. Uh, I think it, you know, you can't uh, get too panicked if it doesn't go well early. Um, you can't get too confident if it does. Uh, you're going to have to play a couple hours of good volleyball from start to finish to have some success tomorrow night. Coach, Chris Lazarino, Kansas alumni. You guys played the late game on Saturday, a long day of travel, and now travel today with finals worked in the middle of all that. How tough has preparation been to get the team ready? Well, you think, uh, you know, we finished on Saturday and this match isn't until Thursday that you got time, but uh, we did have a long travel day Sunday, but there was a lot of smiles on the plane. Uh, and then for, the, for our young ladies who are, represent our university in a great way academically too, obviously it's been some stress with uh, finals and we still got some finals to go, but hey, we'll take it. We'll take it every year if they say, you got to take a few finals during Final Four week, uh, during semifinals week. We we don't have a problem with that. We just got to manage our time. Try to try to manage your sleep patterns, your stress, and all the requests that people are making around you. Coach um, Anise has been quoted as saying that she grew up in a family where um, modesty was was uh, was encouraged. Um, maybe overt displays and being overly public about things was discouraged. Those are not normally traits you would, would uh, find in a setter or want in a setter. Um, do, would you comment on her and her, uh, uh, her ability or whatever ability she's put into it, despite the fact that she was brought up in a family that said, you know, be modest, be, be calm? We found out, uh, our staff found out on Monday that she was the first team All-American. So we brought her in, told her, she was excited. She was excited for Kansas volleyball. So Tuesday, I thought, hey, I should call her mom, you know? So I call mom up, and uh, I said, hey, how's everything going? Good. I said, did you, and he said, called you, right? She said, no. So here's a kid that's first team All-American, hasn't, you know, humble enough that she didn't think she needed to call home and, and say, hey, guess what happened to me? I said, well, your daughter's first team All-American. Okay, I'm going to break the news to you. Um, so that aside, off the court, when she gets on the court, uh, she's, uh, she's an intense, fiery competitor who does not like to lose. And uh, she creates great opportunities emotionally for our team, competitively for our team. And there's nobody else we'd rather have running our team than Anise Havili. Coach, when you look at the, uh, the other uh, semifinal matchup, there's two teams that are pretty unbalanced. There's one player that gets a lot of swings on those two. You and Nebraska are a little different, and there is a lot of balance. You're probably the most balanced of the four uh, teams that are here. Uh, what is that like to prepare against a team like Nebraska that doesn't have one clearly dominant hitter? It makes it tougher. You know, USC, we, we had a sense where the ball was going to go 35 40% of the time. But here, uh, they have four or five, six I got a couple kids on the bench come off and, and go off. So everybody's got to stay in their role. Uh, there's tendencies always when, it, when, the, when it's a 2020 match, but we need to understand that they've got uh, a, a lot of good offensive players, defensive players. So uh, we'll create opportunities defensively where we'll uh, understand some tendencies, but also know that 
um, they could go outside of what their tendencies are. Coach, uh, Greg Eklund for Kansas Public Radio. This has some special meaning for Maggie Anderson. Can you talk about how she has fit well into your program for someone who came in relative late when, relatively late when she was making her commitment? Uh, yeah, she's from Lincoln, Nebraska, first and foremost. Um, and then she had kind of made a commitment, a verbal commitment to Kearney. And we had her at a camp, and we said, oh, bummer. Um, we think you could do great things in our program. And I think she took that home and started thinking about it. We had a great conversation with her coach at Kearney, Coach Squires, and then it worked out that she could join us. And these guys will tell you here that Maggie Anderson brings it each and every day. And uh, the culture she brings to the gym from a communication standpoint is unmatched. And uh, we wouldn't be the team uh, that we are without her. And I made a promise to uh, her parents when she came to Kansas. I said, okay, we're gonna play University of Nebraska someday. So they were pretty thrilled after the USC match that this is the way we were gonna do it, so. For any of the players, we mentioned that USC victory, but just the way it happened at the very end, I'm not saying you weren't a competent team, but how much has that done for your confidence going into this big stage here? Kelsey, can you begin? Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, we started 2-0, so that was good. That was awesome for us. That was a confidence boost right there. And then we fell down the next two sets. And the fifth set, when it's 0 to 4 again, you know, we're down, and then it's 13 to 9, and we're like, well, we have two points to make something happen. And so I think we, we all just looked at each other and we're like, now is the time where we, we grind out and we, we do what we know how to do. And so winning that match is huge for us. And I think there's been other games in the past, like our five set uh, match against Texas, even though we lost, I think at that point we realized, you know, like we can, we can play with elite teams. We're, we're good enough. And so it's, it's been great for us. Taylor, do you have anything? Um, I think sometimes you get your confidence from uh, the people around you. And I know that my team trusts in me as much as I trust in them. And that's the great confidence boost right there. Anissa? <coughs> um, yeah, I think throughout the season, um, starting off the way we did, 19-0 um, built up to this confidence that we have. Um, we knew we were playing the number one seeded team in the tournament after we beat Loyola Marymount. And we, um, yeah, there was nerves, but we knew we could beat them. We knew everybody's beatable. You know, nobody's invincible, so carrying that in really helped us. Ray, can you touch on the, the message that Jared sent to you? I don't know if he texted you or called you after, after you guys beat USC, and, and, and also just kind of the uniqueness that, I don't know, maybe volleyball coaches have that where um, he'd be willing to want to help yeah, you Yeah, it. It's a, it's a small world in volleyball. And I was walking down the hallway this morning, saw four or five coaches from other places, and they're excited. So uh, we attend this convention every year. We, um, we build relationships that are long-term, that are beyond wins and losses and, and the sport itself. And that's what's cool about it. But Jarrett's always been, uh, we've always been, since we've been in the league a long time together, very supportive of each other, unless we're playing each other. But even then, we gain information from each other. And we're a big Texas fan right now because we, um, we're Big 12 fans, obviously, so we would hope that they can advance. But um, anything I can do to help their situation or anything they think they can do to help ours, and that's the entire, that's our whole staff and their whole staff because we represent uh, more than just our university, we represent our conference, and we want volleyball to be the best it can be in the Big 12. Are there any further questions? Hey, Coach, uh, Tim Pereira with the Omaha World Herald. Uh, four years ago, you were 3-13 and 13 in the Big 12, and it's been a pretty quick, uh, quick rise to the, to, the, to the national semifinals. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit about what's gone on over the last four years? Yeah, I was talking to uh, Coach Chamberlain was with me during that 3-13. and 13. I think Coach Bird maybe too. We weren't a bad team. We just couldn't figure out to win at the end. Um, we had an RPI like of upper 40s or low 50s. We beat Minnesota that year. We went to Final Four. But in the end, uh, we needed people who could close and felt confident in closing. Um, and then we brought uh, the Susies of the world and Cassie Waits and Janae Halls and the class before that and Caroline Jarmock, and we could go on and on. But um, we weren't that far away. And then we had a breakthrough the next year, and I think the momentum's just built since then. Uh, and we can thank uh, now this, this group of sophomores that have kind of 
help us carry on that momentum. But it's, it's been a collective effort. Many classes taking responsibility uh, for that process. And now I think we built a culture where that's the expectation. Final call for questions. Coach, both teams uh, limited opponents to under a 200 attack percentage. How important is it going to be, uh, maybe from a serve and receive standpoint, to get Nebraska out of system and, and, and to stay in the system yourself? It's critical. It's, it's uh, First contact will be a huge part of what goes on uh, tomorrow night. Uh, they're great uh, first contact reception. They're steady serving. So we'll have to do a great job in that area. And our serve a lot of times sets up our defense in those numbers. So. Uh, we take some risk with our serve, but we got to serve tough and in uh, to have some success tomorrow night. Clint Robis from the Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, for the players or the athletes, um, Minnesota and Nebraska are both in the middle of finals week, and I was just curious if you guys had finals to take this week or kind of where you are, at least in the semester, or even if you've had kind of a crazy week to this point with classes and everything. Let's go yeah. down the line with a Nisa to start. Um, yeah, it's been pretty hectic this week. The um, Had to try to fit most of your finals in two days. I took three finals yesterday. Um, a lot of girls have finals to take at the hotel after practice. So it's been a lot to do in a couple of days, but I think it calm my nerves a lot more. I, didn't, I couldn't really focus on the game. I had to focus on all the finals that I had to try not to fail. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been a, a blessing in disguise, I would say, I think. Kelsey? Yeah. yeah, I think this is like the best kind of stress you could ask for. I mean, if you're going to have finals during Final Four week, you can't really complain. I mean, I'd rather be doing this than, I guess, sitting at home. So um, I mean, I had two finals on Monday and one yesterday, and I have one to take tonight. So, But I'm done after that, so that's all that matters. <laughs> so then volleyball. Yeah. Taylor? Yeah, I'm with Kelsey. I'm done tonight, too. But there is a big group of us that have to take one tonight. Um, like Coach B said earlier, um, it's important to manage your time. And I think that's this has helped us manage our time and helped us, like they said, um, not focus necessarily just on volleyball, but you know, get out of the state of volleyball a little bit to relax and calm down. We'll take one final question. Seeing none, I'd like to thank Coach Bouchard and the student athletes for joining us. Thank you. Good luck, Coach.